Hey guys, Mills from MTG here. Today we're going to be having some gameplay of a deck that I recorded this week. What seemed to be fairly popular was the Persist combo deck. So I'll be playing that. But before I get into the actual gameplay, we have our opponent here, Jinja47. But before we get in there, we're going to put on some nice music. This is uh, Living for That instrumental by Lil Pitchy. We're going to be looping it so we don't have to worry about it. And the nice thing about instrumentals, you don't really mind if they're on the loop. So we're going to listen to that, hopefully it's loud enough, while we are playing. I apologize if the background music is very, is very loud. Not music, but the background noise. I'm in a different place than I typically record, so it might be a little louder. But we're going to hop right in here, uh, and we are on the play. So we'll go ahead and draw our hand. And this is, this is keepable. We have that going on right there. So uh, we're going to keep. Okay, now that our opponent is keeping, I'm going to... Uh, Go ahead, start us off with a Temple of Plenty scrying. Um, I kind of want it, but it's... We don't have the mana for it, so... We'll put it on bottom. Our plan here, though, is to definitely go this route right here our opponent is playing fairy conclave they will be playing merfolk probably Seems like they for they they just forgot to draw. It's a fairly casual uh casual in the way of like hey if you forgot to draw you can draw most of the time. Right here we are going to drop uh I really want to drop that. Yeah. We'll we'll wait a turn. Uh, we'll lose, uh, no, I'll just voice crack as much as I can. We'll just play, uh, Devoted Druid without losing life, and we'll pass the turn. Apparently, you're also so you're also if you pay are able to get sleeves and a playmat of like whatever you want. I play for free. So yeah, it is going to be that Merfolk matchup. Let's see if they have counter spells for us. We are going to be playing another Lanwar Wastes. Uh, I kind of want to do it. I'll, I'll play Quill Spike. And then... You know what? I'm actually going to play it by... Uh, doing it like that then I will pay one life it won't get us a uh, creature which is one of the downfalls because we're going against a uh, we're going against a creature based deck so dress might be might be a little iffy for us just gonna wait for them to reveal their hand uh 
Uh. Hmm. There's so much they can do. We're gonna go ahead and have them, uh. Get rid of the deprive. Uh, we had to pay the, we had to pay for that um yeah end of turn yeah they realized that we could see the card that they drew That's one of the things you have to be careful about what you reveal. There's an option where you can reveal once or you can just keep revealed. Okay, they are swinging in. Uh, they have Tracy's dismember. There's not a lot. They're probably going to wait to a uh, trickster during our turn. We'll go ahead and just take it. Yeah. We'll go ahead and untap, draw a card. I want to get another white source out, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll move to combat. Ooh, but they do have Harbinger. But they don't have the mana for Harbinger. So they're going to Trickster here. Let's see what they tap down. Probably the... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We'll 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 let that happen. We'll go to uh, second phase. We'll play another devoted druid, and then we'll tap here, tap here, tap here. We have to lose a life, and then we'll go ahead and play kitchen finks. Now kitchen finks enters the battlefield. We'll gain two life. We'll pass the turn. This is an interesting matchup because Merfolk has a lot of interaction. And so this is quite an interesting... Oh, they're threatening sees us. Okay. I guess that's better than... <laughs> I guess that's better than other things they have. Okay. They'll draw a card off of that. And then we will untap, draw. We'll go ahead and see if we can force something out of them now. We'll go ahead and dress. Yeah, I'll have them. I'll have them discard the dismember. And then combat. They don't have a response to going to combat because they can't. This goes away, by the way. Um, I will swing in with my Kitchen Finks and Quill Spike. Yeah, they're they're concealing now.
Yeah, typically there are no blockers. The opponent will just like press Q, like be like, hey, no response. Um, but they might be taking some extra time to think about, oh, what are... Trickster for Quill Spike. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's how it's going to go. I'm going to tap Devoted Druid. Tap for a green. And then I will then untap it. Uh, this is before damage. And then I'll untap it putting a counter on. Use floating mana to use Spike's ability to remove a counter from, oh my gosh, drum from Druid. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm tapping Devoted Druid for a green. Then untapping Devoted Druid to, and then putting a minus one minus one counter on it. And then I'm going to use the green that I use, that I, uh, I'm going to use the green that I got from Devoted Druid to remove a counter from Devoted Druid to give Quill Spike plus four plus four to kill the Merfolk Trickster. And then that way, yeah, so Trickster dies because my Quill Spike will be a four four. And then Quill Spike lives. Yeah. Uh, next up, I will... Uh, did I play... This is nice because you can see the... Uh... Yeah, I have not played a land this turn. So I'll go ahead and... I'll toss out a pathway. And then... They take the three, and then we'll pass the turn. We're, we currently have zero cards in hand. But, uh... Yeah. We'll see what they decide to play. They very well could just try to play their entire board. Uh, try to build up their board. Yep, uh, so they're both three threes. Is this combat? I, I'll take it. Yeah, I can't block it. Okay, so what do they have with... Oh, they they might have another trickster. So we'll untap here. We'll draw. Ooh. Okay. We'll say... Eh, if they counter it, they counter it, right? We will cast Anna Fenza, the Kin Tree Spirit. Yeah, I, I'm always cautious with blue decks. Uh, <laughs> go to combat. See if they have, have, have anything pre-combat. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, bouncing the quill spike. That's expected. Uh... This is a 4-4 four, four now. Why not? We will go ahead and swing in for 3. We don't have any shenanigans here, but like, at least we'll be able to make them think we have shenanigans. Boom. I mean, Quill Spike stays? What? Oh my gosh! 
I thought it was Harbinger. <laughs> I I read it as Harbinger. Cool Spikes just tapped. Yes, we don't have to recast it. Um, but yeah. Swing three. We are going to tap with Kitchen Finks. Like, if they block, they block. Whatever. Why'd they gain life? Oh, okay. We will likely only have time for one game because I have a very busy weekend, so I apologize. If you want to see future content with this deck, I'm more than willing to. Um, and I want to, uh, you're going to block with Trickster? Okay. Uh, what I was going to say though is, like, I'm more than willing to record more content with the deck. I just don't have the ability to today. So, uh, it... So the trickster is going to be a 4-4, four, four. so my creature dies, yours lives, but then persist comes back. So how this is going to work, by the way, if you have not checked out the deck tech, go ahead and do it. Uh, the kitchen fix is going to die, and it's going to return with a minus one, minus one counter. When it returns, it'll have one toughness. Then... Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under my control, uh, I can bolster. And bolster will end up putting a wound counter on it. So my uh, my kitchen finks will die. But then it will come back untapped. And it will come with a minus one, minus one counter. And a plus one, plus one counter. So they counteract with each other. Bolster from Anna... Fenza makes it come back with no counters. So when it again, uh, when it dies, it's gonna get uh, it's gonna return, and it has a minus one minus one counter. But then it returns. It also triggers an Fenza, and it gets a plus one plus one counter. So when that happens, they counteract each other, and it's as if it has no counters. So it'll re-enter, and I'll gain two life. It's just a little bit of an extra way for me to gain life against them. Sure, they might kill my creature. They might not take damage, but it's a way for me to gain extra life. I'll go ahead and end the turn. What we know is in their hand. I know they have a Harbinger. But that might be it. We have a great setup. We honestly might die. That's a lot of power. That's a lot of damage. That's a 5-5 five, five Trickster, a 4-4 four, four Lord, a 4-4 four, four Merful, uh, Master of the Pearl Triton. That's... 14 no 5 plus 8 is 13 I'm an English major not a math major so that's 13 damage that's almost lethal okay so that is going to be Five damage. No, five plus one, two, three, four. Dang. Oh my gosh, that's so much damage. Okay, if we get a sack outlet, like if we get a sack outlet, oh, that would be great. We have eight of them in the deck. Untap, draw. Dang. That's. Uh, disappointing. Um, we'll say combat.
No response. Okay. Oh wait, they only have Harbinger, and they ha they don't have four mana. So we'll go ahead and swing like this. We can make hopes of what they block. Like if they, if they block Finks, sure we gain two life. If they block Anafens, it won't come back. Oh my gosh, those are the blockers? Question mark. Okay, so okay. So here's the reasoning probably of why they did the blockers. Oh my gosh. Here's the reasoning. Because if they kill Kitchen Finks and then they kill Anna Fensa, it comes back with a minus one minus one counter where Anna Fensa can cancels out. But the problem with what they did was they left Quill Spike open. So Druid will add green untap for a minus one minus one i'll activate spike and get infinite power so the way this works is um The way this works is that Quill Spike is going to get that minus one minus one counter removed from Devoted Druid. So I'll get, I'll be adding green and then untapping it, get the minus one minus one counter, use the green that's floating to remove the counter and gets plus three plus three. And that's repeatable. So uh, let's just take 22 damage. Let's just say 22 damage. Yeah, they should have blocked Quill Spike, but I mean, we'll take it. Just from Quill Spike, yeah. Um, Because the way this works is it really it really does work where I tap my druid, float a green mana, and then in order to untap my druid, I have to put a minus one minus one counter on it, and then I can use the floating mana and the counter, I can remove both of them, to put plus three plus three onto Quill Spike to make it infinite. Tanks. Thanks. GG. Okay, uh, well, anyway, uh, that is the game. I I really expected to lose it, not gonna lie. Uh, I think it might have just been a uh, forgot that Quill Spike Druid existed, or maybe they didn't realize it. Um, but either way, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. We were not supposed to win that game, but we did. Um... If we drew a sack outlet other than Anna Venza, we also would have won on the spot. Well, not won on the spot, but we would have gotten infinite mana. Not infinite mana, infinite life. So essentially won. Uh, we would have kept playing until we got our other combos. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the deck. If you want to see more gameplay where I pr probably don't get as lucky, uh, let me know below and I will see you next time.